Greetings and welcome to the micro learning uh, opportunity entitled Board Volunteers and Transition Planning, Building Leaders and Growing Community. I'm Mark McAlevey, the Executive Director of Serve Indiana at the Department of Workforce Development at the State of Indiana. And, uh, and I look forward to talking with you about this really exciting opportunity to think about um, how you are leveraging your board volunteers for your organization in a way that um, is not only giving back to your organization and strengthening the work that you're doing in your town um, or community, but also building up leaders um, and building a pipeline of leaders that, um, that is, uh, I think, transformative for uh, your mission and for your community. Um, so let's, let's dive in. Today we're going to talk about um, a few different things. First, I'm going to share with you a little bit about Serve Indiana and why we think about this work and why we talk about this work. I think it will make sense for you once you get a little introduction to who we are. Um, I'll transition into um, this concept of board membership as a two-way street. I think a lot of times people um, who are running organizations think about board members as members who give to the organization, their time, their talent, their treasure, or whatever. Um, but, uh, but we think about board membership as a two-way street. So it's, it's not just about getting from your board members, but it's also about giving back to them and kind of creating this transformative relationship to benefit them, your organization, and the communities that you serve. And we'll move then into how you can transition your organization from being more of a traditional board um, that's being led by more of a traditional board to, to being an organization that's being led by a leadership building board of directors. And, and we'll talk about what that means and what that can look like for you and your organization. Uh, so Serve Indiana, again, I'm the executive director of Serve Indiana, and um, uh, I've been in this work in, in the nonprofit sector in Indianapolis and across the country, really, um, for over, uh, for about 15 years, I'd say, um, in different executive roles. Um, and over the past uh, 10 years as, a, as an executive director, um, so I understand, you know, the nuances of, of board volunteerism, you know, what board members bring and how important they can be to the organization, but also how detrimental a board member can be to the organization. And I just wanted to share that with you before we move forward. Uh, serve Indiana, uh, we have this great vision that one day every Hoosier will serve their community. And so hopefully if we work ourselves out of a job, you'll see that in your communities, um, that uh, you'll have more neighbors in, around your towns and, and your cities engaged in the work that you're doing um, as a result of our work. Our mission is to advance service and volunteerism by informing, connecting, and promoting opportunities and resources that enrich the lives of users. You may have heard of us in a, in a prior life as the Office of Faith-Based Community and Initiatives, or OFBCI, uh, and, we, um, and before that, the, the State Service Commission, or Commission on Volunteerism and Service, uh, we house that commission. It's a, it's a commission that's appointed by the governor, um, and we oversee all the AmeriCorps funding as well as Indiana Kids funding, which used to be called Mitch's Kids, um, and it is a, a pass-through grant from the uh, FSSA uh, to support um, kids in the out-of-school time space primarily across the state of Indiana. We also run a, an award ceremony called the Serve Indiana Volunteer Awards for Excellence, uh, it's coming up on November 8th, so if you find yourself in Indianapolis that evening, please stop by um, and catch the uh, inspirational experience that is that those award ceremonies. We also have a day of service grant opportunity, so if your organization uh, or community is interested in hosting a day of service but you need a few um, dollars to help with that um, for, you know, different things like promotions or uh, supplies and materials to support your day of service, uh, we might be able to support that. So um, go to our website and you can find out more. Um, we also support volunteer centers. So we have different resources and, and technical assistance programs that we can help. Um, if you have a volunteer center in your community to help strengthen their work, you can find all of that at serveindiana.gov. So moving on to, um, to talking about building a, a leadership board of directors. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times the traditional board of directors um, is viewed as a group of people that are leading an organization 
And, and, and a lot of times those, those people are selected to be on that board because they're perceived as having something to offer. So an executive director or a CEO of an organization um, looks at, uh, uh, at their board of directors as a group of people that they're trying to extract a talent from or funding from or network from, and that's great. Uh, uh, but there's something more, right? There, there's, there's three um, essential, like, legal duties that boards of directors must adhere to um, by way of, um, you know, uh, law and IRS regulations. Uh, those are the duty of care. So this is, you know, every board member should be there to make sure that um, they're taking care of the nonprofit that they're serving, that they're leading. Uh, the duty of loyalty, so a board of directors, each board member is supposed to be on that board to make sure that um, the organization is loyal to their mission, you know, that they're, if you are serving, you know, uh, if you're a Main Street organization and you're there to, to make sure that the quality of life around the Main Street of your town is thriving, um, you know, you probably shouldn't be involved in, like, uh, uh, and not, you know, um, making sure that T-shirts are sold in California, right, if you're a Main Street organization in Indiana. So the board of directors is, is, is supposed to be um, making sure that the organization is loyal to its mission. Um, and then also there's a duty, the third duty is, is duty of obedience. So making sure that the organization is compliant and obedient to the rules and regulations that are set forth by the different structures for which it operates under, the governing structures, the bylaws, federal rules and regulations, state rules and regulations. Um, so, uh, but within those three duties, uh, there's a lot more that can be done. So if you have a board of directors that's just adhering to those things, you're not going to make as big of an impact as an organization. Um, so really, when you look at the traditional board of directors, it is kind of a one-way street. That's a dead end road. You know, you're, you're not going to go places. Um, if, uh, if you only adhere to the traditional roles of a board of directors. But there's more, and we'll talk about that. So I want to talk about tra transitioning into boards as leadership building. Uh, I've found in my work uh, over the years with, with nonprofit organizations and leading boards of directors, and also as a board member of different nonprofit organizations, that um, it is so much better to look at your board members as also people who are developing themselves. And it doesn't matter if they've been on a board or, uh, for many years or if they've, um, you know, been in the sector for many years or if they've been practicing whatever they practice for many years. There's always an opportunity to learn and develop. And I think that kind of uh, sense of continuous learning is something that's important to recognize. So, um, the, uh, and it's also important as an executive director or a leader of an organization who is interfacing with the board of directors to, to understand that every board member on their board of directors has a circle, circle of influence and has uh, an opportunity to step up and lead change in their communities. And, um, it's, uh, and oftentimes they don't understand or haven't navigated that pathway themselves in their personal or professional lives. So as a leader and executive of your organization, I think it's very important to not just look at the talents and time and treasure that your board member can give to the organization, but how you as an executive can coach each board member to, to deepen their sphere of influence, to, to strengthen their leadership abilities, um, and, uh, and to, in, in essence, give back to them as, as board members for your organization. Um, this benefits not just uh, your organization and the mission and the impact that you're um, pursuing in your work, but also it builds up a cadre of leaders in your community that then can go on and do other things once they leave your organization. We'll talk about that in just a few moments. Um, but as this graphic shows you, you know, it's this, instead of a dead-end one-way street, we have, you know, several intersections here where you, as an executive, you're seeing leaders come in and out and move through your organization and you're capturing their energy and their, and their inertia um, to, to, better, uh, to better serve your organization and to better serve the community that your organization is situated within. So let's, let's see what that looks like in, in practice as we transition from a traditional board into a board that's leadership building. So 
So a great way to create a leadership building board, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is, is, is having the executive director or CEO of your organization really um, uh, see themselves as a leader developer, right? So they're not just leading an organization. Um, they are developing uh, and harnessing, you know, leadership skills in each board member um, that sits on their board. And this is a shift. I mean, I think a lot of executive directors or CEOs of nonprofit organizations um, uh, don't always see themselves in this role. Um, but, I, but what I have found is that when you make this shift happen and you start to connect with your board members one-on-one -on -one in this capacity, you get so much more out of it. And the, and the, the, the board member um, views their relationship with the organization in a much more positive framework. And you start now developing a real partnership instead of, you know, the board being the boss of the executive director or the executive director being the leader of the board. It is a real transformative partnership um, when you start to approach your work in this way. One great way to start um, uh, leading as a, as a leader developer, as an executive director of a board, um, is to work with each individual board member on identifying their assets. And um, in their network, you know, the assets of their network. And I, I have a great tool that I'll share with you. So once um, that will help them see kind of what assets exist in their network. Um, this is just a foundational exercise I think that's important for each board member to do, you know, prior to or once they start the board or as you're starting to transition this, this into this phase of a leadership building board. Um, it allows them to think differently about their circles. It allows them to think about, you know, who they know, um, who, who they know might care about the work that they're doing, and how they can bring them along with them. So it's a, it's about approaching this. This starts helping them see how they can really lead a change effort um, as as a member of your board of directors. Um, and then I'll show you, and I'll show you in just a minute what that looks like. The second um, the second tool is a individual board member portfolio. This is a great tool that you can use as an executive director or CEO of your board to connect one-on-one -on -one with each board member and allow them to tell you um, who they have in their network that they want to bring in, when they want to do that work, and you can start to track um, their, their impact for your organization. And also it gives some space in the dialogue for them to identify ways that you can help develop them as leaders. And you can track that as well. So during the time that they are, they are on your board, um, you're able through this portfolio to determine, you know, the impact that they've made on your organization as a board member and the impact, impact the organization has made on them as a growing leader in your community. I think it's a pretty transformative tool. Um, so let's take a look at what those look like. So this is a, a template, an example that you can use. You can make your own. Um, this is just something that we recommend. It's simple uh, for a board member asset slash network map. And this is something that you can deliver to each board member individually or have them, you know, give them to them at an orientation meeting and have them fill it out on their own. Um, but it, it jogs their memory to think about the different buckets of people that they may know in their communities that they want to bring in um, to support the mission of your organization. You know, so I have um, – one, one bucket is the corporate community. So ask your board members to think through who do they know in the corporate community of your you know, geographic landscape. Um, you know, if you're a Main Street organization, like who do they know that's connected to your Main Street from a corporate perspective that they can bring in um, to help for funding, to help for opening doors, you know, to help for being an advocate for your work, all sorts of things. But this just helps them think through who those are. I think it's also important for them to think about who's in their faith community or their associational life community. So, you know, if, if your board member is a part of a, a church or a synagogue or a mosque or if they're involved with like a, you know, um, a key club or a, uh, uh, you know, a country club even, any kind of association that they're involved with, um, if, they, if they know people in those areas that would love the work of your organization, um, this is a time for them to, to let you know who they are. Uh, and the same with their families. I think a lot of times in this work, people forget about their families. Um, you know, we might have uncles or cousins or, um, you know, spouses or, you know, whoever that, that um, 
uh, would be great to get involved um, as a volunteer or as a leader of your organization. And lastly, I, I find the, uh, the last, another great bucket to think through is your neighborhood. So uh, everybody lives in the neighborhood and um, your board members oftentimes aren't asked to think through who on their blocks or who in their subdivisions or um, who in their particular geographic community would be great to ask to be involved with the work of your organization. So this just helps them think through who they who is in their circle of influence. I think it's an eye-opening experience for them too because they can start to see like how big of an impact they have as a human and as a leader in your community. And we'll move on now to the, to the next tool, which is the portfolio. So this is just, an, again, another template that you can use. You can create your own as well. Um, but I have found these to be, um, this, this structure to be helpful in creating a board member por portfolio. And again, this is a portfolio that I would set up for each individual board member. It has, you know, um, a place for their name. Uh, their term, um, their title, their, their, the, you know, if they're employed through a company or organization, what company or organization that is. Um, and then I have, again, buckets. Uh, these are different areas that they can identify of things that they want to work on as a board member for your organization and when they want to get that done. And then also things that, that they want to receive from your organization in terms of leadership development. So, um, one category um, on the left there is um, top fundraising connection. So you, they'll have that asset map that I just showed you, the network mapping, and they can use that to think through who in my network um, should I go to as a board member or who I could take, you know, the executive director or the development director to um, to make an ask for a financial con contribution or to get involved with the organization with their financial assets. Um, and this could also... Um, not just be individuals, but the companies that their friends, their, their you know, church members or their um, family members might be connected to companies that they could list there. And it's, I think it's important to also note dates um, of when these, these things should happen. So your board member says, I, wanna, I, have, a, I have a really well-connected um, neighbor who has, I think, you know, a great capacity to give to our organization. And, and I know that we have a couple of block parties over the next couple of months, and I'd like to use those block parties to warm that neighbor up to this idea of making a contribution. And I, so I think, you know, it's May. Let's, let's say I want to make an ask um, by August of 2019. And so you, that, you write that down in, the, in there. Um, I'm going to make those, those, those feasible deadlines um, and important deadlines. Um, and that helps with the tracking of, of their impact. Same with the um, top influence. Um, so who in their networks are those people or those entities that can open doors for the organization? You know, I've got this, I work with this person at my company um, who's on the board of every, you know, nonprofit and a couple for-profit organizations and companies across the city. And I just know that if, if they get on board with what we're doing here, doors will be open. So I want to make sure that I get on, a, on that person's calendar to have lunch with them and talk about the mission of our organization and then when you want that to be done. Um, the, then shifting um, to the other side, uh, the right side there, is more about what you're giving to the board members. So I, with the board portfolio, I also want to give space to this. Uh, one category is to ask them to identify areas of personal or professional development that they want to receive as a result of the board member. Maybe they've not experienced fundraising before. Maybe they've not experienced like governmental compliance or fund rate, fund compliance. Um, so there are things that you can expose them to in your practice as an executive uh, of a nonprofit organization um, that uh, that they want to grow in. Or, uh, or there are other ways, right? Other things that. Um, Maybe they're interested in community development, and so you can connect them to your friends at Okra uh, and see if they can learn more about the, how community development shakes out, particularly in rural communities. Um, you know, whatever ways that you can leverage your connections as a, as a leader um, to help your board members can be identified there too. And then let them think and reflect about how you can support them in their leadership. You know, maybe there are some doors that you can open up for them over their term as a board member. Um, or maybe there are some books that you can help them, you know, that you've read over the course of your profession that you can connect them to to support their knowledge base or, 
you know, you can, there's so many ways, but I think it's important um, to keep this section here uh, to let them think about what they need from you. And this is a living, breathing document. Like, I, I like to have them sign it and date it um, just so that it, it's official. Like, I feel like that gives it some credibility. Uh, but it's important to update it. At. Every time I meet with a board member, I bring this portfolio with me. We, you know, among the other things that we talk about, I always like to, to you know, uh, get updates on where things are and, um, you know, where they are with the work and how I can support them in their, in their volunteer service to the organization. So I, I hope you find this to be a really important tool. And again, you can modify it, create your own tool even if you'd like. And this is just an example of, I think, a, a pretty, um, uh, functional um, board member portfolio. So with all those things, I think the, those two tools and this idea of, of, um, of leading a board that's a leadership building board as opposed to a traditional board of directors um, is planted in your heads now. We've talked about it. You kind of get a sense of what it means, um, and it, it really is about you know, looking at your board members, not just as people who are giving to your organization as leaders, but also as people who are getting something out of the experience of being a board member. And, uh, and, I, and I will say that I think once you start doing this, other organizations in your community will take note. Like, they'll see, they'll hear the stories of um, how board members, you know, have this profound transformative experience being on the board. And, other people will want to recruit your board members because they'll see how they're developing as leaders and they'll see their sphere of influence and their circle of influence grow. Um, and that'll be a, an attractive feature uh, as other executive directors um, are. And I think that's a good thing. Like, we should embrace that and own that. Um, and, and I think it fits really well into this concept of transition planning and um, and using your board of directors to support the mission and, uh, and impact of your organization and elevate it um, to, the, to the highest degree possible. But also um, to make sure that, uh, that, not every, not, that nobody gets stuck on your board. That, you know, I think what we're trying to guard against here are the 10 or 15 year long board members who, who you know, have just been around and they're great assets to the organization, but you know, it's time for them to move on um, building a, a leadership building board of directors is a great way to approach those types of situations. Um, so how do you do it? I recommend building a strategy, like working with your um, board executive leadership, so your, your board chairs, your co-chairs, you know, your secretaries, your treasurers, your executive team on your board, and talk with them about how you as a leader want to make the switch. You want to become a leadership building board, and you can use that language. I think, you know, talking about a framework change is, is, is good, and, um, and recognizing this as a framework change is good, and, I, and they should, if you talk about it well, you know, they should be able to buy into it. And I'm happy if you have challenges to support you in, in that conversation, um, however I can. Um, <clears throat> as you build the strategy, I think you'll recognize if you don't have term limits in your bylaws for your board of directors, I think it's an important time right now to start talking about that. Um, the, it, it is a best practice to make sure that term limits are set for boards of directors. I mean, there's just, um, it's not a good practice for the organization and it's not a good practice for the board member. Uh, I will never join a board that doesn't give me a term limit because everybody needs an out, right? Like at, at the end of the day, you know, if somebody has a bad experience and there's no term limit, it, that presents an awkward situation. You know, they either have to quit um, or they have to be kicked off. And nobody wants either of those things to happen. So it's great to have a term limit to say, like, oh, there, the end is in sight. You know, I know that I at least committed to two years or I committed to three years or a year. Um, so figure that out. And, and, um, and, and if you don't already have term limits, um, make sure that you establish those in your bylaws um, and, and practice them as an organization. Uh, the second thing to do is to start creating external board partnerships and create um, uh, like a board, um, like almost like a par uh, organizational asset map, just like we did with your board members. Do that with the, the organizations that in our, in, in our around your community. Um, and develop partnerships with your board so that your board members are talking to their board members. Um, and supporting each other. This also helps with the leadership development. So 
when your board members hit their term limits and you've done the work of um, develop, developing them as great board leaders and they've done the work of, of in, investing their time and talent into your organization, you can use those external board partnerships um, with other nonprofits in your community to exchange board members. So you call the executive director of the local United Way organization and say, hey, look, I got this great board member, they're terming off, and they love like social service and they love like figuring out the way that communities are engaging around social service. And I know that's what you do as a United Way agency. Um, I would like to introduce you to this board member. I think they'd be great, a great potential board member for your organization. So you're sharing leaders, um, uh, and and uh, and you're give, you know that you'll be giving them uh, potential board members that um, are developed and have you know great skills as a board member, and and vice versa. If you open up the door to those organizations, you'll also develop a pipeline of new board members for your organization. The other thing is that it's great um, as you're transitioning into a leadership building board to build in time for recognition. So if you utilize the board portfolio that I shared with you, you can see how natural benchmarks um, can be established. When your board member gets their first gift from one of their, from one of their networks or when your board member um, you know, reads that book and, and articulates the thing that they wanted to develop to the rest of the board, you know, that should be recognized and you can build in really super cheap, super clever, and very um, meaningful ways to recognize board members and their achievements to the board. Um, that'll, that'll just make them much more engaged as a board member. And when they leave your organization as a board member, they'll leave it with just that much better taste of an experience. Um, and they'll talk about that, you know, for years to come. Uh, so I, I, I highly, I highly, um, you know, uh, I, I come to the recognition work with, with high esteem. And lastly, um, committee pollination. So many organizations, and I'm sure yours do to have committees. If you don't, I would consider, you know, not for the sake of establishing committee, but have one or two committees that's important for the work, but also that help build pipelines. So um, you can bring on uh, new potential new board members um, to the committees and use that as a as a um, as a interview, you know, an interview process for them. See how they commit to the organization, and see what kind of strengths they bring, and and, and um, see what kind of opportunities you have as an executive to support them in their development. Um, first on the committee level, uh, and then when you have an opportunity, that way you, you know you can bring people onto committees throughout the year. You might have an annual um, onboarding for your board. Um, so that way you can keep people warm to the organization, experience them, let them experience the organization, and when it's time to make the ask for them to join the board, you know exactly what you need to know whether or not to make that ask or not. Um, so I, I, again, uh, I think building a strategy to transition, and I can help you with that if need be, establishing term limits um, so that the board is always fresh and, and engaged. Um, and that you're um, building up the leadership for your community as well as for your organization, creating external board partnerships with nonprofit organizations and really understanding who's in the landscape and how you can do that, um, building a, a, a system of recognition to honor and recognize the contributions you're making to your board members and they're making to your organization, and a committee structure that helps pollinate the board from years to come is a great way to transition into this new understanding of how you can build a leadership building board for your organization. And that is what I have for you today. Um, Serve Indiana is here for you to support you and your work in engaging Hoosiers and your communities. Um, if you have any questions or any comments or would like to talk with me further or anyone from my team, we'd be happy to do so. Again, I'm Mark McAlevey, uh, Executive Director of Serve Indiana, and this is how you can get a hold of